Hello, y'all. My name is Chris Hunt. I'm an artist in Briscoe Museum of Fine of Arts. I'm here today in the sculpture garden to talk about sculpture in the process. What I have right here is a sculpture that I started on a few days ago uh, that I thought you might like to see and hear about how it works. Most of my sculptures are started after I do a drawing. And uh, once I'm satisfied with the drawing that I've done, I start what I call roughing out the sculpture. And so the reason I rough out a sculpture is, is to make sure that I'm happy with the design, movement, and emotion that I have before I start working on details. And what I do is I take a piece of armature, which is basically a pipe, and I take this clay, and I mostly only use my hands when I'm in the roughing out process. And the reason being is, I'm not really worried about detail. Detail is one of the last things you want to worry about when you're sculpting. The most important thing is your movement and your form. So I take this clay, which, by the way, is a classic clay. It's a wax-based clay. And the difference between a wax-based clay, which many of you know about, is water-based clays. A wax-based clay allows you to use it without ever drying out or cracking. Whereas a water-based clay, if you use it on sculptures, if you don't water it and cover it with plastic, and eventually and over time, it will crack. With this wax-based clay, if I'm not happy with the sculpture, I want to take time with it. It can sit on my shelf for years and will be just fine with this classic clay. Now, beyond that, what I do is I start roughing out the piece. And for instance here, you'll see my face on this piece, which I do. This is basically a life-size piece. And a life-size human head is about nine inches. And what I do is the face is divided in three different sections in measurements. You'll have two and a half from here to here, two and a half from here to there, and two and a half from there to there. And, and the width, you, you do all those measurements out. And that's kind of how I figure that out. So I'll do an entire piece solid. I'll use my fingers, pull out my eye sockets, push down where the nose slot will be, add a piece of clay there, push down from here, push out where the mouth will be, add some clay there, and I basically have that roughed out. And what I do from there, I decide how big I want my cheekbones will want to be, and where I want my skin to fall, where I want my wrinkles to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as you see, it's still loose because I don't know exactly at the end of it how I want the face to be exactly, but I want the form of the face to have an idea of where I'm going to go. And the same goes, for instance, with the headdress. As you'll see on the headdress, it's very loose and it's very uh, not detailed. And the reason being is, after I finish this entire headdress, which is going to go from here all the way to here, and I have it in this way, I may or may not be happy with it. And if I'm not happy with the form of it, I may move the feathers around, et cetera, et cetera. Where, and if I do that in, in this entire process, if I wasted time on detail, all those hours of detail would be wasted if at the end of this I decided to change the form and movement of the piece. So it's very important when you're sculpting not to worry about detail. The important thing on sculpture when you're starting to rough it out is the form of the sculpture, its movement, its anatomy, it's so important. Now once I've finished with this, if I'm, if I'm happy with the form, I'm happy with the anatomy that I've done, at that point in time, I can start worrying about detail. And that's when I start using actual tools, wooden tools with my points that I get into fine places and other ends and scraping tools. And I can also along the way use what's called calipers. And my calipers, I can make sure that my anatomy is correct. The size of my eyes, my cheekbones, my chin, the, the head. I can measure all these in accordance with the anatomy of the human body and make sure they're correct. Um, and over that time, when you're doing your detail, you want to make sure to continuously check that when you're doing detail, that you're not moving your clay around so much so that you change the form and the movement of the sculpture either so it doesn't get incorrect. Uh, and along the way, sculpture is one of the most fun and artistic creative processes you'll ever get encountered. So I highly encourage everybody to do it. Uh, you'll learn a lot. You'll experience a lot of things. And at the end of the day, you might come away with a wonderful sculpture. So I encourage everybody to try their hand at it and have a good day. Thanks. I'm Chris Hunt.